the convention. Oh, a lot of you. Oh, I'm so glad. If you, if, how many of it is your first convention? Oh, I'm even more delighted about that because we'll be introducing you to some really, yeah, no, it's fabulous. Um, it, it'll be a very interesting experience for you. Um, last year was the first year uh, we did women in soccer. And with that, I'd really like to thank and congratulate Diane. She's done a fabulous job with this. Uh, she took it on as a labor of love, quickly found that uh, events are hard work. I, I admire people who do events for a living. I realize that that's not my thing. Um, I, I love other people's parties. That's, that's really what I like. So this is Diane's party today, and I'm so glad to be here. But I joined the NSCAA 18 months ago, and the question of power has been a very interesting one for me, because all of a sudden I was perceived in a fairly powerful position. Um, uh, it is one of the prominent organizations of American soccer, and I am currently the only woman CEO in any of those organizations. And I've been asked a lot of times, how did I feel about being the first woman CEO at the NSCAA? And I, I'm certainly proud of that fact, um, but I have nothing to, to do with it in many ways. I hope, I believe, that I was hired for a whole lot of other reasons, and not because I was a woman. I was hired, I hope, because of my experience, my capabilities, um, uh, all those things that we each hope really defines us, as opposed to our gender, our ethnicity, our age, whatever that may be. Um, but it has been an interesting experience. And so I've been here 18 months, but let me tell you a little bit about my past. Really just as background, if you don't know me already. Prior to coming to the NSCAA for eight years, eight and a half, just about eight years, I was the chief marketing officer for an organization called AYSO. And AYSO is the American Youth Soccer Organization. And I saw a couple of old friends in the room today, which I was really pleased to see. AYSO is an organization some of you know very, very well, and some of you may not know at all. But it's a youth soccer organization. It's a very large one. It has about half a million kids nationwide across about 900, uh, we call them regions, but they're sort of the equivalent perhaps of a club. Uh, that was my first experience in youth soccer, and perhaps one of the most um, useful experiences I have ever had. I have discovered youth soccer may be the toughest job in American soccer. It just, it's a, it's a, it's a, tough, a tough place to work because it's, it, it's so passionate. People are so passionate about it. Prior to that, I worked for almost 20, over 20 years as with an organization called Soccer America. Soccer America is a media company, and it had a magazine for many years. Today, that magazine is largely digital. Um, we covered, it was, I would have told you it was the best job in soccer. We covered international, professional, college. I got to watch the trends of soccer. I got to watch the growth of soccer. I got to be part of that for all of my career. And I think that was one of the greatest experiences ever. So I'm really just telling you that little bit of background about me, so I sort of frame, what it really means is I'm old. I've just been around a really long time. That's really what it means. And, and one of the nice things about that is that you feel pretty comfortable saying things and doing things that would embarrass you when you were 30. At whatever my age is today, which I will not share at this moment in time, they don't embarrass me anymore. I'd rather be very direct. I'd rather tell you what I think and what I think is the way to go into our future. And, and power is one of those kinds of topics that I think is worth really talking about in a very direct way. But before I take that next step, what I'd like to do for a moment is I'd actually like to know a little bit more about you. If you don't mind, we're gonna take a little bit of a vote here, not a vote, show of hands. First of all, I'd like to know how many folks in the room are coaches? How many coaches? We have a lot of coaches, okay. How many folks are entrepreneurs and business people? And you can be more than one, okay? You've got a group, group of those. How many administrators do we have in the room, okay? Okay, there are several of you who are raising your hands for everything, and that truly is the soccer way. Uh, we have many hats in soccer, many hats. And as a last question, because I wouldn't want to leave them out, how many referees do we have in the room? Okay, good, good. A smattering of the evil folk. Good, good. That's what, so, with that, and I say that purely tongue-in-cheek, I assure you, I assure you, the game does not happen without referees. So, for me, the topic of recognizing the power of women was kind of fascinating. Because I had a boss, actually, one of the things about AYSO that was kind of interesting for me is I had a lot of bosses at AYSO. Uh, during my time there, I think I had five national executive directors in some combination. And one of those, who was not one of, among my, and there were some wonderful, wonderful people, 
So I don't deem this as a criticism of the organization in any way. But there was one particular gentleman who said to me one day, the thing about soccer is the reason people are in soccer is really for power, glory, or money. Which are you? And I went, wow. That's a, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. So I, I'm going to take another show of hands. How many people are in this for power? OK, good, no one. How many are in it for glory? OK, got one. Oh, thank you, thank you. Somebody at least told the truth. OK, two, yeah. How many are in it for money? OK, that I really don't know. We all have to make a living in the end. But I think the point is really, um, for that particular gentleman, and a lot of gentlemen like him, I think one of the things about power, because that's our topic today, is that the way men look at power and the way women look at power is often different. And that's a terrible piece of profiling, right off the bat. As soon as you say, men do this and women do that, you're wrong. But I'm going to make that kind of a generalization because it's true enough of the time. We look at power differently. In my opinion, we need to define power in our own way as women, and certainly women in soccer. For men, or at least the men I have worked with in my career, and again, for you men in the room, please do not take this personally. Uh, my husband would, so he's not here, because he would just be mad at me through the whole thing. Uh, for men, oftentimes, the way we define power is getting people to do what you want. And that's the, often the definition. For women, power is a lot more about getting things done. I want to get things done. And that's really kind of what I had to look at for myself when I joined the NSCAA, is I like being a CEO. I do. It's one of my, when I went to AYSO, I, with intention, I had been a CEO for almost 16 years. And with intention, I had taken a step, quote unquote, down to CMO. I was in a lower position to a bigger organization because I wanted some experiences that I didn't already have. And I found it actually rather difficult to be number two. And the first part of my learning in the job was actually to figure out how do I deal with being a number two where I cannot make the decision. So in my time at AYSO, that was a really important learning experience to me. The power that I had was derived in a different way. I had to influence others. I had to help others succeed. That's not to suggest you don't do that as a CEO too, but it is different. So now at the NSCAA, my job is to be powerful, I hope, but it's to be powerful by getting things done. And that's what I say to you as the women in this room and women in my life, is that when we define power and recognizing our power, it's about getting things done. So one of the things that I believe in is that words have power. And shortly after I came to the NSCAA, I had a, a, uh, an employee who I heard actually say this, which and when he was referring to me as the Queen Bee. And at first I thought, wow, that really hurt my feelings. And then I thought, you know, words have power, and I rather liked that notion. So I'm going to honor that a little bit. And I mentioned to him, you know, by the way, you're right. I am the queen bee here. What are you going to do about it? And we have since then become friendlier than we were for a little while. But I, I use this analogy for you or this example for you, not because it's my story, but because it's a story you live every day. I was heartbroken recently to be on a call with a group of women coaches from a state association who I will not reference here, but happens to be very close by, who were, and, and there's not that many that are really close by, that were really struggling because these were women who were qualified, they were capable, they had tremendous resumes, and they couldn't get jobs. They couldn't get hired. They said, when it comes down to it, the club always hires a man and not us. And it doesn't matter that I've been a college coach. It doesn't matter that I've won championships. And the reality is, is that we have to remember that it's important that we take our power back. So I'm actually, if you were in my talk last year, I, I, I used to, I like 
things that are in lists. I remember, I have, I have the memory of a sieve. You know, I can tell me something, five minutes later, there's a good chance I've forgotten it unless I have some framework to remember it in. So uh, for me, it's really handy to have a list and then have a framework for a list. So last year what I did is I, I used a word. And each of the words, each of the letters in the word had a, had a meaning. And, and it was the way I remembered it. And I don't even remember what the word was anymore. Well, I have a new word this year for you. I have a new word. And five things I want you to remember. But for me, this is a word that I, and remember, words have power. It's time to take back the power of this word. And the word is bitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. That was so good. Who knew? Paul, hello. And you're like, you're clapping because I say that. <laughs> I love you for that. Yeah, I'm going to remember you for that, too. Um, the point is, how often is that used behind, behind, it's rarely said to us directly. Rarely. Occasionally it is. I actually would prefer that it was, because then you can address it. It's not. Too often what it said, it said, you know, in the bar, behind closed doors, guy to guy, guy to gal, isn't she a bitch? And as a rule, what it means is somewhere along the way, you tried to take your power back. You tried to take a stand. You tried to be firm and clear. And men have, and again, again, I hate to profile you men, but men have a whole lot, they have a much bigger repertoire of descriptors for all those behaviors. We don't. Somewhere along the way, if we take our power, whether you're a CEO or you are anywhere else in the organization, whether you're an entrepreneur, a coach, um, you're a bitch. I heard the woman, a woman on this phone call say, you know, if I'm too tough, if I'm too hard, I know that's what they're saying. I'm a bitch. So today we're going to take that word back and own it. And with that in mind, I have decided that I will find... So, the B, I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, last year I wrote on a, on a pad and wrote my letters and stuff. I'm not going to do that because you'll remember this word, right? Last year I was sure you weren't going to remember my word, but this year you'll remember my word. So the B in bitch is we're just going to have that stand for bitch. <laughs> and I actually think it's necessary that there are times you just have to go there and you have to open. And the reality is, is you cannot be afraid to be tough. You cannot be afraid to say what needs to be said. Now, in saying that, I'm going to have some qualifiers in a moment. But I put that out up front, not because that's where you're going to be all the time. But if you're going to own your power in our sport, if you're going to own your power in your life, you're going to have to be comfortable with going to that place. There's a lot of other descriptors for it. This is perhaps not one of the most gracious ones, but it's an easy one to remember, and it's one not to be afraid of. So the I, actually, in this word, I'm going to have stand for inspiration. Inspiration. I think one of the critical things for you to be capable and comfortable being tough is to be very clear on why you are inspired to do things. What is your why? Now, some of you know that I have a, I'm a big fan of a marketing expert named Simon Sinek. And Simon has a terrific session that he does about finding your why. But I'm just going to bring that out in a very short way. Finding why you do things is crucial for you. Because when you are inspired, when you inspire yourself, you inspire others. And that I, frankly, lets you have the backbone and the comfort factor when that first letter and that first word comes out. So we have B-I. So the next one is T. And for me, the T here is really about team. And that's a nice sports phrase, but it's really about building a team around you. That's something women are very good at, and they don't realize what a powerful thing that is to do. We are often told or feel that we need to do something alone. And you do not. Having your power is as much about pulling people into your sphere, inspiring them, as it is doing it alone. You need to feel comfortable that if you're really being a bitch, you know, you got your team around you too. So, my C, and these are softer words that perhaps qualify that first word, but I think it's together 
that it gives us our power. Our C is really for collaboration. I am, my entire career, I have been a collaborator. I believe in bringing people and collaborating. I believe in working with others in this way and having it be a win-win situation. Um, I have actually struggled with that at times. Is that tough enough? Is that, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of another word, is that manly enough? Well, that doesn't come out quite right. So is that womanly enough? Am I being tough enough? If you're collaborating with others and you're not doing it yourself, and you're working with others and that sounds, and we've even got a word for it. We have the word, it's called soft skills. I'm like, oh, I don't want to be known for my soft skills. But collaboration and being able to work with others and bring people into your sphere is what helps you build your power base. It's what helps you build your power base. And the final letter of my word is H. And this sort of qualifies it all. It's actually kind of a delicate one. And the H is for humor. It's for humor. Do not lose your sense of humor. Now, I say this very qualified. For you who are earlier in your careers, I want to be very clear about this because some of it is don't take yourself too seriously. On the flip side, do not laugh at, a, at, a, at an off-color joke. Do not find it amusing or act like you find it amusing. If you're in a coaching course and an instructor decides to make some remark that actually isn't funny, it isn't funny. And, I, and I, I bring this out only because the line of humor is a really tough one. I want you to take the world seriously. I don't necessarily want you to take yourself seriously. And I think that's one of the things that often women who are moving into a powerful space struggle with is we're often perceived with a chip on our shoulder. So I want you to diffuse the notion of a chip on your shoulder, but I want you to bring forward the notion of humor is a very powerful thing. It lets you lighten the mood. It lets you say some rather harsh things sometimes, but with a little levity. But flip side to all of this is, you know, I have an African-American husband, and he and I have been together for uh, 40 years. So we've talked a lot, both as a person of color and as a female, is when do you laugh at the joke? And when do you not? And that is actually a moment-by-moment decision. That's very personal. But the reason I, I, you know, that's the downer part of humor. But I bring humor to you because it's also a very powerful weapon. It's a very power, weapon is the wrong word. It's a very powerful tool. It's a tool for you to use to own your power, to be able to lighten the mood, to be able to make a little fun of somebody who's saying a really stupid thing. And remember that may be a good way to do it. But it's also, again, just that notion of don't walk around with a ship on your shoulder. Take the world seriously, not necessarily yourself. So power. The very fact that each of you are in this room today, both the men in the room and the women in the room, you have made a statement by being here today, by spending your time and your money to be at a day that's about women in soccer. Um, our time has come in so many ways. Women need to help each other be powerful, but we also need the help of the men around us to be powerful. The rules of the game are not, and this is not the game on the field, this is the game in the boardroom, this is the game in life, this is the game in your, your setting where you're trying to be that coach um, and get that job. Um, take your power back. Be comfortable being that bitch when you need to. Don't be afraid of the word, and don't be afraid of being in that slightly uncomfortable place, but a place that lets you own your power. I am very pleased to be here today. This is going to be a really fun and interesting week. We have 250 sessions going on. Several of the folks in this room are some of the best and the brightest in our, in our sport are going to be presenting and teaching and training. There's so much to learn. But perhaps the coolest part of this at all, and I close with this because I think this is sort of the essence of power, is you're going to meet all sorts of people. This is the most amazing networking opportunity. And for all of those things I just talked about, the more people you know, the more people you interact with, the broader your network is, 
the more people you get to talk shop with and bounce ideas off of and learn from, the more power you will have. So take advantage of this week. It's a wonderful experience. I say that as somebody who really built their career with the NSCAA convention as part of it. I'm very proud to be in the role that I am today, but I simply, um, I, I'm simply living off the legacy of 75 years of people who have made this organization what it is today. And it's amazing. And you're amazing for being here. And thank you for spending a little time for me with me. And I look forward to you owning your inner bitch. And that is just as true for the men in this room as it is for the women. So thank you very much.